संकल्प योगी भवति कश्चन यम संसमित प्राहु योग तम विधि पांडव हाँ सो अ गुड कर्म योगी इज बोथ सन्यासी ऑल्सो एंड योगी ऑल्सो योगी ध्यान योगी सन्यास इज मेनली अबाउट रिनाउंसिएशन एंड योग ध्यान योग इज मेनली अबाउट क्वाइटनिंग द माइंड बोथ द एस्पेक्ट्स वी सी इन कर्म योग यार भगवान गिव्स एज द आइडेंटिटी ऑफ सन्यास एंड ध्यान योग He says what we consider as sannyas, yam sannyasam iti prahuhu yogam tam vidhi pandava. Hey pandava, understand now that sannyas and dhyana yoga also is same. See, we when we listen to Bhagavad Gita or to other spiritual discourses, we hear about so many different paths, but they are all interconnected. They are all interconnected. and they are also complementary one helps the other so one should not feel that oh sanyas is different karma yoga is different dhyana yoga is different though they are different also but they are connected to other paths so bhagwan first he said that karma good karma yogi is both sanyasi as well as a dhyana yogi now he says a dhyana yogi and a sanyasi they are also same what is their similarity he says in dhyana yog sanyas is required and in sanyas dhyan is required he says that without giving up sankalpa we cannot become a good dhyana yogi we cannot become a meditator without giving up sankalpa hmm. nay yas sanyast sankalpa yogi bhavati kashchana and without having that uh, state of peacefulness and quietude one cannot become a good sanyasi also so they are complementary meditation complements sanyas and sanyas complements meditation so they go together the more and more i have renunciation in my life the more and more the mind will become quiet the more and more my mind becomes quiet the more and more i will be able to drop all my attachment so they are complementary therefore bhagwan here says that yam sanyasam iti prahuhu yogam tam vidhi pandava he pandava that which is called sanyas understand that as yoga also as dhyana also it is same so sanyas means renunciation and yoga means meditation is similar means complementary the more and more you renounce the more and more you get established in that state of meditation in the deep state of meditation actually we have to just keep on dropping what i am holding on to by ignorance by my attachment and as i become free of all attachment i go into the state of meditation more and more so tyage hmm na karmana na prajaya dhane na tyage nai ke amru tatva manasu hu only by renouncing by giving up first we have to give up all that which we consider as my first we have to give up my and later we have to give up i the little i not the big i big i you cannot give up my 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 world ha huh, that is given up my body my mind my thoughts my experiences my memory my this my that all this is drop and as you drop you go into state of meditation meditation is not some action which we have to do it is we have to drop our attachment we go into the state of meditation it's like a person is uh, uh, seated uh, in the boat in the river 
and the, all the water is uh, moving, so the boat is also moving and that person is also moving. But when he comes out of that boat and sit on the shore, which is steady, he also becomes steady. So we are seated in our body, we are seated in our mind, which keeps on changing, which is restless. So in the state of meditation, we have to drop them. So meditation involves sannyas, and sannyas involves quietude of the mind. So they are complementary. So yam sannyasam iti prahuhu yogam tam vidhi pandhava. Nayas sannyasta sankalpaha yogi bhavati kashchana. Bhagwan is saying very clearly here that if you want to become a yogi, a dhyana yogi, without giving up sankalpa, you cannot become. Sankalpa means desires. Sankalpa means attachment to our thoughts, attachment to our uh, various concepts and ideas. And ultimately the idea of uh, I, the little I, one has to drop it. See, in order to hold something, we require effort. Ne? We require special effort to hold. Suppose I have to hold this flower, I require special, and it becomes quite uh, painful also. Somebody keep on holding and all. Nowadays we have to hold mobile phone all the time. <laughs> keep on holding. So it's very painful. You have to be alert. When we go to sleep, the first thing you get, it gets dropped. Hmm. So we are holding on to our body, mind, and all, thinking that it is I, that is my. So in the state of meditation, we have to just drop, drop them. So that is the, uh, that is called sannyas. So na, he, uh, a sannyasta sankalpa, without giving up this sankalpa, Bhagavan says, nobody can become a yogi. Nobody can become a meditator. You cannot have attachment here and there and be a meditator. Meditator, meditation is about detachment. Meditation is about becoming free of all that is, is, uh, is uh, binding our own self, including our mobile phone. Please switch it off. So all that is binding our self, we should be able to drop. In the deep state of meditation, you drop even the sense of I. It's like uh, the river becoming one with the ocean. It drops its identity. Ganga no longer remains Ganga. Yamuna no longer remains Yamuna. See, they leave their identity and merge with that ocean. But if we have attachment to our identity, we will not merge with it. We will prevent ourselves from becoming one with our own higher self. So that Dropping, renouncing, giving up attachment, giving up identity with all that is false is what we call sannyas tyaga. Hmm. So that is required for a good yogi, tyaga, and this proper balance of the mind is required for sannyas. So they are complementary. So nayas sannyasta sankalpa yogi bhavati. Kashchana. So more and more we have sannyas, the more and more we will go into a deep state of meditation. The more we go into deep state of meditation and experience the inner joy, the more we will be able to drop. See, even to drop something, we require something higher. If we hold on to something higher, it is easier to drop something lower. Like a child, I used to say that if the child is holding something, it will not leave it, but if it is shown something more attractive, it leaves this and then catches the other thing. Similarly, our mind is holding on to our body, our mind, and all this attachment is there. In the deep state of meditation, as we start feeling more and more peaceful, more and more the joy, which is unconditional, which is the very expression of our own self, the more we will be able to drop. It becomes effortless. It's like a person is sleepy. It is very easy for that person to drop. 
everything gets dropped. Mm -hmm. As we become more and more sleepy, that sleep pulls us. In the beginning, in the initial stages, we have to move towards sleep. There are people who cannot sleep, uh, sleepless night they have. So we have to put forth effort to move towards sleep. But once we get a glimpse of that sleep, once you get a taste of the sleep, and wherever it can come, suddenly it might come in the pravachan also. It can come anywhere. It is like a mystery. When it will come, we don't know. So when we get that glimpse of that sleep, I tell you that time we want to just drop everything. And just, people even in the, while traveling, they are holding on to the, um, that rod on top in the bus or train and they sleep. Because we don't want anything then. So similarly, as we progress on uh, meditation, sannyas becomes easy. And as we do sannyas, meditation becomes easy. So sannyas and meditation, they go together. And a good karma yogi is both a sannyasi as well as a meditator. Having given the importance of karma yoga and praise karma yoga, now Bhagavan tells us in the next verse, a very important verse. He tells us what is the role of karma and then what is the role of quietitude of our mind. Aru rukshur muner yogam Karma karana muchate Yoga rudhasya seva Shamakkarana muchate Aru rukshur muner yogam Karma karana muchate Yoga rudhasya seva Shamakkarana muchate Haan, Bhagavan says, Aru Ruksho Ho Munehe Yogam. The Muni, Manana, Muni means Manana Shilvan, a reflect, a person, a seeker, a contemplative seeker. A contemplative seeker is called Muni, who has contemplated and understood the nature of one's own self, his own self. So such a Muni who wants to, what you call, uh, go on the path of meditation, the final stage, the meditation stage. Aru Rukshoho Muner Yogam, one who wants to abide or one who wants to uh, climb as though the stage of meditation, Bhagavan says, for him the sadhana is karma. Karma karana muchyate. You follow the path of karma. Karma means karma yoga. So one who wants to be, follow the path of meditation should prepare by following the path of karma yoga. Aru rukshor muner yogam karma karana muchyate. Karma karana means karma is the path for one who wants to meditate to prepare hmm, oneself. One has to go through this path of karma yoga. But once we have prepared ourselves through karma yoga, then what? Yoga root, such a person who has, who has reached the stage where he can follow the path of dhyana, such a person is called yoga root. Arud means one who has mounted, like we mount a horse and all, no? So, one who has mounted the horse of yoga, you can say, of dhyana yoga. So, such a person who has made himself fit through karma yoga, which karma yoga means karma yoga, which has led to jnana, knowledge, and vairagya. Such a person is called a yoga root, and for a yoga root, the only sadhana is shama. Shama means quiet.